Over the generations, the land of Hyrule has seen many cultural practices stemming from the different Hyrulean races, and they span across all of the Legend of Zelda titles. We have the resilient Gorons, graceful Zoras, the aerial combatants of the Rito, the enigmatic Sheikah, the mysterious Kokiri, the ancient Uka, and a handful of other races, but my personal favourite are the noble thieves of the desert, the Gerudo. Players were first introduced to the Gerudo Thieves in 1998 with the release of Ocarina of Time. Ocarina of Time was the title that really started to explore the origin of the people of Hyrule. We already had the Zoras from the original Legend of Zelda, but in that game there were enemies, but over the different titles the Zoras eventually became more peaceful towards the player. We were also introduced to the Gorons, the Kokiri, and the Sheikah, although the only Sheikah we really came across was Impa, Princess Zelda's personal attendant and bodyguard. Some may argue that Sheik is part of the Sheikah clan, but seeing as it is simply Princess Zelda in disguise, she is not a true Sheikah as she wasn't born into the clan. Finally, we were introduced to the Gerudo, a group of thieves made up entirely of women. There are a few things I would like to address about the Gerudo and their tragic history, so we will start with simple and obvious facts and then we'll go deeper. In the early history of the Legend of Zelda, the land that was to become Hyrule was simply known as the Surface. It was not yet unified and it wasn't inhabited by Hylians at all. The only races on the surface were Gorons, Kikwis, Mogmas, ancient robots, Perellas, the demon tribe, and one lone Sheikah. And the land was sanctioned into three provinces. The Farron Woods, Elden Volcano, and the Lanayru Desert. These provinces share their name with the guardian dragons tasked with protecting the land. In the west is the Lanayru Sand Sea, and was once known as the Lanayru Sea, which predates the events of Skyward Sword. The terrain in this area changed dramatically as climate forces rapidly turned it into a desert. Curiously, the only thing that had used the word Gerudo during this time was the insect known as the Gerudo Dragonfly. Based on the in-game history of The Legend of Zelda, it's difficult to decipher why the inhabitants of the desert chose the name Gerudo. It is said that the names of the Gerudo and the Gerudo Desert were likely chosen because of the enemies that were introduced in the Adventure of Link and A Link to the Past, the sand dwelling Galdam and Geldman. There is no letter L or even a sound for the letter L in the Japanese hiragana alphabet. So decades ago when the Geldman were first introduced to this series, the English version replaced the symbol for Ru with an L making the word Geldman instead of Gerudoman. The original Japanese name given to these enemies was Gerudoman, spelt with the hiragana symbols ge ru do ma nu So if we get rid of the man part, we're left with ge ru do or Gerudo. So when the thieves were introduced in the Ocarina of Time, they were given the name Gerudo as an homage to the inhabitants of the desert from earlier titles in the series. During the era of the Hero of Time, the Gerudo are met with much hostility and discrimination, and I wonder if that's their own doing. It is written that the Gerudo are willing to use force to achieve their goals, and their reliance on thievery may also contribute to their negative reputation throughout Hyrule. In the early games, they seem to have an apparent disdain towards outsiders, particularly men, which is still the case in Breath of the Wild. But in Breath of the Wild, they are willing to let women of other races enter Gerudo Town. There is also the barrier of language and different scripts between Hylians and Gerudo, as well as the difference of religious beliefs and iconography. An example of this would be the giant Gerudo goddess statue located in the Desert Colossus and in the Spirit Temple from Ocarina of Time. Due to their differences in religion, the Hylians believe that the Gerudo goddess is evil and it would not be unwarranted to assume that this would perpetuate their distrust of the Gerudo thieves. Also, the official symbol of the Gerudo is derived from the back of the head of a King Cobra, and as snakes are generally perceived as dangerous, the choice to use this symbol speaks volumes of the Gerudo tribe. Thousands of years later, in Breath of the Wild, we learn from Muava that the Gerudo no longer believe in the goddess Hylia. Instead, they worship the seven heroines and are seen as their divine protectors. The heroines embody the virtues that the Gerudo value most, these virtues being skill, spirit, endurance, knowledge, flight, motion, and gentleness. The worshipping of these heroines is most likely attributed to the famous peculiarity that occurs among the Gerudo women. It is stated that the Gerudo women have a biological predisposition to only give birth to female children, and the nature of this strange phenomenon is never explained. In the Gerudo tribe, only one male is born every 100 years. The last documented male Gerudo that was born was named Ganondorf, and we all know what type of person he was. So not only do the Gerudo have an aversion to men, the single male Gerudo documented in Hyrulean history 
turned into the king of evil. So it wouldn't be difficult for people to empathize with the Gerudo thieves in their thinking that men bring pain and suffering. Without a king to rule, the Gerudo were led by a chief with the position passed on from mother to daughter. In Breath of the Wild, the Gerudo records state that there hasn't been a male leader since the king who became the Calamity. In Ocarina of Time, while Ganondorf is off conquering Hyrule, the Gerudo are led by Noboru. However, she rebels against Ganondorf as she doesn't approve of his methods. Not only is she highly respected by the Gerudo, she is also the Sage of Spirit. In Breath of the Wild, the divine beast Va Noboru is named after Noboru as a sign of respect. During the events of Ocarina of Time, Noboru was captured by the evil Gerudo witches Koume and Kotake together known as Twin Rover. She was brainwashed and forced to do their bidding until she was freed by the Hero of Time. It is said that the witches rule the Gerudo tribe from afar through the use of magic and manipulation. That is, until the Hero of Time brought them to their untimely end. The situation of Twin Rover and Ganondorf's personal history is a topic of gargantuan proportions, but if you would like me to explore it, please let me know in the comments and I will try my hardest to find out as much information as I can. But for now, let's get back to the lineage of the Gerudo race. If only one male is born every 100 years in the Gerudo and the last male to be born was Ganondorf, the next feasible question would be, how have the Gerudo survived as a race? According to the Gossip Stones of Ocarina of Time, it is true that the Gerudo travel to Hyrule Castle Town to find boyfriends. This might be a little crude, but it is an indirect way of informing us that the Gerudo find Hylian men to father their children before returning to the desert. We see this in action in Breath of the Wild on a few different occasions. We find Ronson in Karakara Bazaar who makes her way to Tarrytown, where she falls in love with Hudson. There is also the Gerudo at Lover's Pond who is looking for her one true love, and there is also a class in Gerudo Town called How to Find a Husband 101. One. It seems that love interests are of a higher priority in this title, much more so than that of the previous generations of the Gerudo. Having Hylian fathers for so many years, it appears that the Gerudo race is starting to change. Originally, the Gerudo had rounded ears, but as we can see in later titles, these ears have become more pointed, much like the Hylians. So it seems like the DNA of the Hylian race is starting to alter the genetic makeup of the Gerudo. Once known for being harsh and resourceful due to the environment that encompasses them, the Gerudo apparently have become a lot more relaxed as time has passed. Still forbidding men to enter Gerudo town as well as forbidding the sale of male clothing, other traditions seem to have been re-evaluated. They now accept female travelers to pass through their gates to visit and trade, they also seem to have foregone their thieving ways, or at least it's not as apparent in this game. They seem more like traders and merchants in Breath of the Wild, but how they came across their merchandise is a totally different matter. It could be stolen goods, but then again, times have changed. The Yiga clan managed to steal the sacred Thunder Helm from the Gerudo, so maybe they've lost their touch in the ways of thieving. To me, it seems pretty embarrassing if the Yiga clan can outsmart the Gerudo. You know, the tribe known for thievery. Maybe they've become a little softer and more predictable since they were allowed back into Hyrule, which is a great segue into my next point. Several years before the events of Ocarina of Time, Hyrule had erupted into a civil war for reasons unknown. After much bloodshed, the war had ended which resulted in the unification of Hyrule under one banner. Ganondorf swore fealty to the King of Hyrule, placing the desert under Hyrule's control. With this allegiance, Ganondorf was able to move freely about Hyrule while putting his plans to find the Sacred Realm in motion. In his search for the three spiritual stones, he cursed the great Deku Tree of the forest, cut off the Goron's food supply, and cursed the Guardian's spirit of the Zoras, Lord Jabu Jabu. After realizing that Link was collecting the spiritual stones at the behest of Princess Zelda, Ganondorf waited patiently for the young hero to complete his quest. Once Link had the final spiritual stone in his possession, Ganondorf made his move. The king was assassinated, and Impa rushed Zelda to safety, removing her from Ganondorf's reach. As the two fled from the castle, Zelda threw the Ocarina of Time to Link, who was able to use it in conjunction with the three spiritual stones to gain access to the sacred realm. It was all planned so perfectly. Ganondorf Ganondorf's manipulation of these events went mostly undetected until Impa sensed danger and escaped from the castle with our princess, according to the words of a dying soldier. Ganondorf then waited for Link to enter the Temple of Time, and once the door of time was open, Link claimed the Master Sword, and Ganondorf entered the Sacred Realm while Link's spirit was frozen in time. He then found the Triforce, however, as Ganondorf's heart was not pure and balanced, the Sacred Triangle split into its three separate components, leaving only the part representing the force that Ganondorf most believed in which was the Triforce of Power. With the Triforce of Power in hand and Link being sealed in the Sacred Realm, 
Ganondorf launched his invasion of Hyrule with his army of dark creatures and the warriors of the Gerudo at his command. At this time, Noboru was under the control of Twin Rover, so it's likely that she unwillingly took part in the invasion. It is unclear if the Gerudo warriors were willing to participate in the occupation of Hyrule or if they were acting out of fear of their leader. At the end of Ocarina of Time, after Ganondorf has been defeated in the adult timeline, we can see some Gerudo warriors celebrating at Lon Lon Ranch alongside the other Hyrulean races which would imply that they are now free from Ganondorf's control and have condemned the actions of their king. But what of the other timelines? In the decline of Hyrule timeline, where Link is defeated and Ganon is sealed inside the Sacred Realm by the Sages, the Gerudo are never heard of again. So my theory is that once Ganon was sealed, the Hyrulean races rallied together and managed to drive the Gerudo out of Hyrule or simply just wiped them out completely. A little bit of a darker turn, I admit, but it is the decline of Hyrule. But there was also the Imprisoning War which took place in this timeline, so maybe the Gerudo were wiped out as a result of this conflict. The Imprisoning War is a topic of discussion for another day. It is one thing part of Hyrule history that is missing significant information. Then we have the Adult Timeline. After Link defeated Ganon, Zelda returned Link to his original time, basically erasing him from that reality. Centuries later, the seal on Ganondorf was beginning to weaken and darkness was creeping forth. The people of Hyrule waited for the legendary hero to appear, but he never did. So the goddesses took matters into their own hands and caused a great flood and many of the people of Hyrule suffered from this. Some people made their way into the higher reaches of the mountains, which were now the islands of the Great Sea in Wind Waker. The children of the Kokiri Forest turned into Koroks, some Gorons managed to survive and the Zoras evolved into an aerial race known as Rito. But it seems like the Gerudo were not so lucky as they are nowhere to be found in any title in the adult timeline. The only time the Gerudo was seen again is within the timeline known as the Child Timeline. In Ocarina of Time, when Link is sent back to his original time, he warns Princess Zelda and the King of Ganondorf's evil intention. The King takes action and banishes the Gerudo from Hyrule and drives them out of the Gerudo Desert. Ganondorf is then sentenced to death for crimes against the Kingdom. It is true that we see the Gerudo in Majora's Mask, but they are not the same Gerudo of Hyrule. Majora's Mask takes place in a parallel dimension, and these Gerudo are fierce and frightening pirates commanded by a veil. So for obvious reasons, we won't get into the details of these pirates. After Majora's Mask, the next title in this timeline is Twilight Princess. The Gerudo don't feature in this game either, but it can be assumed that they've already been driven out of the Gerudo Desert. The Gerudo make their return in Four Swords Adventure, where we learn that they've made their new home in the Desert of Doubt in the far southwest corner of Hyrule. It's here that they began working on restoring their ties to the Hylians by denouncing their former leader. When we come across the Gerudo in the Desert of Doubt, we also learn that they are no longer hostile towards outsiders and also seem to have a pretty good reputation throughout Hyrule, which is very different from how they were viewed centuries prior. The Gerudo have become a more nomadic race and it seems like they were allowed back into the Gerudo Desert where they established a small village called Gerudo Town. This town seems to have thrived for thousands of years and managed to avoid the assault of the Guardians during the attack of the Great Calamity. In Breath of the Wild, the town is only affected by the divine beast Varnaboros as it is under the control of Thunderblight Ganon. Once Link purges the malice from the divine beast, the raging sandstorm ceases and the Gerudo are able to once again live peacefully. With the divine beast being named after the Sage of Spirit Noboru and Obosa being chosen as the Gerudo champion, it would seem that the Gerudo have repented for the past transgressions of their tribe. They no longer rely on the ways of thievery and violence, although they are still great warriors and they are more accepting of outsiders to a certain degree. They still have a very blunt demeanor and their tenacity is as prominent as ever, particularly in the older generations. I am looking forward to seeing the Gerudo in action in Tears of the Kingdom. The history of the Gerudo is stained in blood and darkness, but their retribution is un undeniable. Starting from such atrocious beginnings to becoming one of the most honored races of Hyrule is one of the reasons the Gerudo are my favorite people in The Legend of Zelda. The words of Lady Obosa seem to ring true throughout the entire history of the Gerudo. The Gerudo can overcome any obstacle that comes their way.